I'm so excited to see this film, first of all. Uh, what do you think people are going to be enticed by, but also terrified by, about the movie? I think that the it's a satire, so there's a lot of funny stuff going on there, but the humor is grounded in a delusion, and it's grounded in a certain naivete, and that naivete and what Kurt, the lead character, does with his... Um, you know, sort of misguided plan is really scary. So it's this, it's this simultaneous balance between uh, stuff that is inherently funny, this desperate clawing for attention, and just the, the madness that it leads to. So it's a, kind of at the same time, I think. And in a way, do you think this could possibly be real in real life ever? I mean, I would hope that something specifically like this doesn't happen, but yeah. there, there is a Venn diagram here. You know, there is this connection between the desperation of all the influencers who didn't make it, who are just trying, they're trying for the validation and attention, and a lot of the people who perpetrate, you know, violent incidents in America are looking for attention. That's the middle part of the Venn diagram, and um, that's kind of the analysis of the film. You know, you have to see it. It's not, like, academic like that, but that is, like, what I'm putting out there, and I, I hope people pick up on that, and I hope we can look at those people and see that we need to like not fetishize them, not aestheticize it, not even psychoanalyze them. We need to say this is fucked up. We need to laugh at them because that is the wrong path. That is the delusional path. Yeah. You know. Uh, tell me a little bit about your first reaction when you read the script. Oh man, uh, when I was reading the script, I was like gasping and laughing and. I had so many emotions, because it's a lot. It's a wild ride, and that's what drew me to this, because I like doing things that are kind of risky, and also it's funny. So, yeah, it was a real treat to read, and then I met Eugene, who is so smart and talented and had a very clear idea of what he wanted. So I was like, oh, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to do this. And can you talk about the relevancy of the story and also your character to, you know, current day right now? Just call an Uber like I'm about to in a few minutes. Yeah. I think this is kind of a critique on social media and our relationship to it, and I play Jesse Adams, who is a comedian, and I am internet famous, and I kind of grapple with how my relationship with social media is affecting my life and my relationships, my personal relationships. So it's just interesting to see my journey juxtaposed to Kurt's journey, where he's so obsessed with social media that he's doing some dangerous and risky things to get followers. So. Uh, I feel like people are going to watch this and hopefully analyze what their relationship with social media is and uh, who knows, maybe reassess what they're, what they're doing. Well, first of all, your movie career this year, I mean, like looking up your IMDb from 2019-2020, it's just like popping off. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I moved to LA to be an actress and I was lucky enough to be a personality on Vanderpump Rules, but I mean, I grew up in Salt Lake, a part of the arts. I would come up to Sundance, wanting so badly to have a film here one day, and here we are. Wow, It's crazy. So, I mean, what does that feel like, and what did you do to celebrate when you found out this film was gonna be a part of Sundance? I celebrate in a very different way now that I'm sober. I ran home, I got in bed with my fiance, we ordered pizza and just like talked about how far I've, I've come. I never imagined that when I got the phone call from Eugene saying we have great news, we got into Sundance, I like, I freaked out. It's like, I keep smiling, I can't stop smiling. I'm very excited. So tell me a little bit about, you know, since you started your career and you've seen the social media blow up and change these new actors' careers, how does this movie kind of freak you out in a lot of ways? I don't know. There's a lot of freaky things about this movie. There's also a lot of beauty in it that I see as far as, uh, you know, seeing what the director wanted to, to, to sort of convey as a story and make a sort of statement on social media. But as far as social media goes, I don't know. It's such a weird world. I don't really understand it, but I just try to I do it just because I, you're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, what advice do you give to your kids now as far as social media goes? And did this movie actually, like, be like, hey, guys, be more careful about this stuff? Well, I don't know. I mean, definitely be careful about who you get in a car with in general in life, you know, because that's super important. But, um... I don't know. I have a 15-year-old daughter, so this stuff's all very close to my heart and, like, not taking it too seriously and living sort of in the moment and being uh, just a genuine person is really what I look for in her. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about what attracted you to this film as far as the social construct and kind of, you know, the satire on society right now. 
Um, I think it's definitely interesting on, yeah, like it, it kind of explores the depths that you would go to to gain like a following and just how uh, the ends kind of justify the means. I think that's a very relevant thing in social media, especially, um, yeah, like in 2018, a lot of like people just like doing crazy shit for, you know, a following. But yeah, that's definitely one thing that was really, I resonated with. I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah. And what side of this story would you say your character is on? Uh, the one that's going too far or the one that's trying to bring it back down? Um, definitely, uh, he, Bobby, it comes more naturally to him. It's a lot easier for him. So, like, you know, he doesn't, he's never had to, you know, do anything too extreme. Um, so he's had it, like, kind of success in every social media thing he's done. Um, but, yeah, so he's kind of on neither in a weird way. He's kind of, you know, successful, but it comes naturally. But I think, you know, he's definitely on the side of, like, toxicity in social media. Like, Bobby is disingenuous and kind of a shithead, and, yeah. So, um, obviously, your social media personally has blown up like crazy in sure. the past few years from Stranger Things. So, how did you kind of attribute what you've gone through with that explosion into this role? Well, I kind of had the exact opposite reaction where I kind of got a bunch of people on social media and sort of felt like I could be less myself and it, it, it was kind of more daunting be just because there are millions of strangers that I've never met, mm -hmm. maybe judging or picking apart something that is supposed to, you know, I use mostly just as fun beforehand, whereas Kurt doesn't have anything. He's starting from the bottom. He has nothing. And he's he's seeking that attention, and he wants that. He wants the viewership. So, you know, I couldn't actually really, I could sort of draw from my own experience, but I guess not directly from the owner. We have had an awesome time here at the world premiere of Spree at Sundance. We hope that you guys have enjoyed these interviews. If you'd like to see more like them, please download our app for free, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or just go to our website. We'll see you next time.